Hi everyone and welcome back to this channel. So since a few weeks, I have been getting a lot of emails and messages from students about dental school interviews. Now, personally, having been through multiple dental school interviews, getting accepted, as well as being on a wait list by a couple schools during my first attempt, I shared my experiences with them. Now, of course, these students work really hard in turning on their charm during the interview process. And with a little bit of guidance, um, some of them managed to get accepted and some are still waiting on the results. So I am so, so, so super excited to talk about this very important part to essentially make or break one's career as a dentist. So without further ado, Let's get started with the dental school interview. Now, first of all, remember to dress confidently. Smile when you enter the room. And nowadays, we have been having a lot of online interviews. So make sure that your laptop is connected to a charger. The room is well lit up and clean and the camera is facing you. Trust me, in the nervousness, these things can be missed. So pay attention to it. Um, actually, one of the students I spoke to recently she had an interview, she went through half of it and then realized that her camera was not switched on and she was talking to them on her iPad. So I would recommend use your laptop, okay? Now, luckily she had a great profile. So when she was interviewed and was not seen on the screen, they called her and they told her that we will reschedule this interview again with the camera on. So make sure you do not forget these things, okay? Now, in some universities, you know, they have a panel of professors for interviews and some may have just one or two, okay? Now, I remember when I went to the University of Washington, I had like four people interviewing me. So before the interview, I asked a few current students and they said three of the panel members will ask most of the questions and one of them would usually only observe body language and confidence and maybe ask one or two questions. He was essentially a human light detector, according to them. So. I must say, you know, it was one of the most stressful interviews because I, A, was, this was my first dental school interview and I had never faced a panel of professors interviewing me. So my lesson from this is get used to being in a situation where you are in a group or you're doing the talking or doing some group discussions. Um, you know, one of my friends had actually worked as a bartender and another in the retail industry. So they found it very easy to start conversations with anyone because they were used to it in their jobs. Some people even suggest to apply for different jobs and then going for different interviews just so you get comfortable talking about yourself to a stranger. But of course, you know, if you're like me and you don't want to go through job applications and all of that, then uh, you can always ask for help from your good old friends. On the day of the interview, if you have a big panel of professors, first thing that you would do is introduce yourself to all the people um, that you come in contact with. And most importantly, use their names, okay? It's very important. Smile, be confident, sit upright, no slouching. You have to be comfortable talking face to face with everybody that you meet, okay? Ask them how their day is going, how was their weekend, um, ask about other things apart from dentistry. Basically, you know, begin with a small talk because this sets a pleasant tone to the meeting from the beginning because, you know, these panelists or these panel members meet so many people or the interviewers meet so many people throughout the day and they are asking more or less similar questions, even they can get a little bored. Now, the most important thing that most people ask is, what kind of questions do they ask during a dental school interview? Okay, so, well, first of all, they want to know about your desire to join this field. So usually questions like, why dentistry? What got you inter interested in dentistry? And, you know, most people write about their why in their SOP. So make sure you have read your SOP multiple times before the interview because you will need to essentially elaborate on what you wrote in your SOP, okay? So if you have some special things in your application, like you play some form of music or, you know, recently I spoke to Amber and she said she had learned Braille and American Sign Language. So the interviewers asked her about that. 
So you need to know your application inside out because your questions will be based on that. So if you've done research, then expect research related questions. Okay. Then they can ask you questions like, where do you see yourself practicing after graduating from dental school? Now, usually they would want the student to work in areas around the school. So include that in your answer. But also know that, you know, life happens. You don't know where it might take you. So essentially keep your doors open for all possibilities about moving to some other areas as well. Then they may ask you things like, do you want to specialize? Okay, so if you're a student who is applying to dental schools after um, the pre-dental, then you may say something like, you have not gone through the whole curriculum of the dental school, so you do not have a specific interest yet, but in the future, you might want to decide on some specialty. But if you are an international dentist, then mention what your interests are and if you would like to specialize in those fields, okay? Apart from this, usually they want to know about you as a person and may ask you questions like, do you read? What was the most recent book you read? So it's always a good idea to read books in general or even if you listen to Audible, you know, it's amazing. I read or rather listen to like one or two books per month and it's perfect. But if you don't read, then at least have an idea of some good book that you might have read a long time ago or nowadays, you know, you can even read summaries from books from various apps. It's so easy nowadays. So when they ask you something like that, make sure you have that answer ready. Okay. Then they can ask you about questions like, if not dentistry, then what would you pursue? Now make sure you answer this question with some fields which would show your strong um, qualities and always tell the reasons why, okay? Maybe you might pursue art because you're good at your hand skills or you may get into med school because you like interacting with people and helping others or maybe become a sports coach because you like leading a team. Are you self-taught? Have you self-taught something? then maybe you are persistent and hardworking and you might become a researcher or inventor. You know, these are some, some of the examples. Then the next set of questions can be about the school. Like, why this school? What do you like about this program? So as, as a student, we apply to so many dental schools, right? And everybody has a different number one program, not necessarily because it's a great school, but because maybe the tuition is less or maybe it's uh, less number of years or maybe it's closer to where your family lives. So there are different reasons. But in general, you know, you can talk up about the school. It's actually a very good idea to visit the school one day before the interview, if you can. If not, then contact the ex-students or um, current students online there's so many social networks that people are on and use them wisely okay so most people end up talking about research so try not to be in the same boat okay add maybe about the location of the schools the professors the number of patients the clinic rotations etc along with the research so this would show the whole panel of interviews or the interviewers that you have done your research on the school and that you really want to be in that program, okay? Then they can ask you about how you plan on handling your stress because dental schools are stressful, it is tough. Do you have any hobbies? Then, you know, talk about what you do. Maybe you swim, you dance, you paint. You know, everyone's is different. So everyone's idea of de-stressing is different. So answer appropriately. In another question, uh, especially for people who probably had a couple poor grades in the undergrad or earlier courses, then they will definitely ask you about that. So be prepared for these questions like, so what did you do to improve? How did you change yourself or your lifestyle or your study habits? What did you exactly do? And you can answer this by discussing how you created a schedule, you stuck to a schedule and so on and so forth. Or something like, well, I got a bit distracted and I did 
not pay as much attention to the subject initially as much I should have as I was not very fond of it. But that grade was essentially a wake-up call as I had never had an F or a D grade in my life before. So I made sure that I worked really, really hard so that I ended up up top of the class when I took it again. Persistence and focus was my key to achieving this. And that's how you can answer that. Then they can ask you about what was the most challenging thing in your life and how did it change you. So talk about those challenges and talk about how they changed you positively, okay? Now that we have gone through almost half of this video, if you found this helpful so far, then consider subscribing and smashing that like button for me, okay? Now let's go through some ethical questions you may face, okay? I remember when I went for my NYU interview, this was what was asked to me. So if you caught a classmate cheating on the test, what would you do? And I said, I would actually talk to the student first, ask them to stop, and warn them about the consequences of their actions. Because, you know, getting into a dental school is hard in itself, and I would not want to ruin that student's chances without even giving them a chance to improve or change themselves. So I would ask them to change, but if they don't want to accept it, then yes, I would then go ahead and inform the faculty because the faculty would know the official method to deal with the situation, okay? Now, if you're an international dentist, they can ask you uh, about certain clinical scenarios uh, because you've already gone through dental school, so you would have an idea about such situations, right? Okay, so questions like, for example, uh, a patient comes in and they want their teeth extracted, even though most of their teeth are all right, but they are probably just severely crowded. And maybe the patient believes that they could just have a great new smile immediately just by getting them extracted and having full dentures which are implant supported. In the media, you see so many actors and models with perfect smiles everywhere. So what do you do if that patient was ready to pay you potloads of money for this kind of a procedure? What would you do? And in that case, you can answer something like this. Well, first of all, if the patient is willing to get an initial evaluation or checkup, then you would check the patient and have a proof of how many teeth are actually healthy or otherwise. And then explain to the patient, along with that data, the importance of having real or their own teeth versus fake teeth like implants or dentures give them the plus and minuses of each and suggest a better treatment option, something like orthodontics for severe crowding, which is actually their problem. And explain to the patient why it's important to maintain oral health and how it's all related to your body as well. And if they still do not agree to get the right treatment option, then it is very important to say that you would not treat that patient with the proof of why you would not be doing it, okay? Then they can ask you something like, give us two or three positive traits or strengths. Make sure that you mention ones which will suggest that you are best suited to become a dentist, like leadership qualities, goal-oriented approach, or multitasking, or patients with, with people, uh, which helps in the treatment. Then, now that the positives are done, let's talk about the negative points. So, like, what are your negative traits or weaknesses? Like, for example, my negative trait is that I find it hard to say no to people, but I am definitely working on it. For example, how you delegate work to people and have high expectations from uh, getting them done, but get super upset when your expectations aren't met and how you're working on it. You know, because you have to work as a team and how you can help a person you delegated the work to by guiding them in the right direction. And that way, have the assigned work completed on time appropriately. Now, they can also ask you things like, what don't you like about dentistry? Because everything in life has a plus and a minus, right? And you may talk about 
the things like cost of dental treatments, the access to care for many patients who are unable to get dental treatments, or talk about the barriers to getting dental treatment because there are not enough dentists in certain locations. Um, you can even talk about um, maybe insurance problems, maybe staffing problems because not many trained assistants or front office staff or insurance staff is available readily for dental offices. Now, once you're done answering all the questions from the interviewers, they will ask you if you have any questions for them. Now, you can ask things like when do students start with the clinics? Do students have on-campus dorms? You can even be ballsy and ask something like, what would the interviewer change about the program? Use these questions to build a rapport with the interviewer. If you're visiting an area for an interview, then you may even ask what would they recommend for the rest of the day to check out in the city after school. You know, these kind of questions open up a new conversation. And usually, one remembers a conversation only when you have something different than usual, right? Because these interviewers are essentially going to interact with so many candidates. So how do you come out as a candidate with a striking and a memorable personality? Well, these kind of questions, because these kind of questions will let you tell more about yourself or what you're looking for in that area, right? For example, if you go to Colorado for an interview, maybe ask about the skiing or the snowboarding resorts. Or if you go to California, talk about surfing if you do that. Because these questions basically suggest that you have other interests in life apart from dentistry and you're definitely looking forward to enjoying your time, you know, with some great experiences in the area where the school is located. And that's all my friends i think i've added most of the questions that i could think of that i have been asked or my friends have been asked or even a few of my followers have been asked now once your interview is done what do you do after that well after your interview make sure you send a thank you note okay if your interview was in person then you need to send a handwritten thank you note addressed to the professor who interviewed you at the school if you had a virtual interview, then maybe a thank you email is fine. Now, for those that are new, I'm Dr. Sam, and I'm a dentist based in Washington, USA. And currently, I am also making some videos on dental schools, and this is actually a part of that series. And also, thank you to Sania, Priya, Anusha, Samin, Scott, Ibrahim, and so many more who contacted me because your messages help me understand what you're looking for and I actually try to add those things in my video. So if you have any friends or family who are going for dental school interviews, then consider subscribing and sharing this video with them so you can actually practice interacting with each other. And that's it for today, my friends. Bye.